Amigo Brothers by Puri Thomas Piri Thomas was born to Puerto Rican mother and Cuban father in 1928 in the New York City Spanish Harlem riddled with crime and violence. According to Thomas, children were expected to be gang members at a young age and Thomas was no exception. Thomas was also exposed to racial discrimination because of his Afro-Latino heritage. Poverty in the ghetto led him to drugs, youth gangs, and a series of criminal activities for which he served seven years in prison. While in prison, Thomas reflected on the teachings of his mother and father and realized that a person is not born a criminal. There he began his life of rehabilitation, vowing to use his street and prison experience to turn youths away from the lives of crime. Thomas then lectured at schools and universities across the country and authored several books including Down These Mean Streets, Savior, Savior, Hold My Hand, Seven Long Times and Stories from El Barrio. He died in 2011 at the age of 83. I'm My Majesty Puri Thomas with a high on anything like a stoned king. I'm a skinny, dark-faced, curly-haired, intense, Puerto Rican, unsatisfied, hoping and always reaching. With these words standing on the rooftop of his broken-down Harlem building, Puri Thomas introduced himself to the world in the prologue to Down These Mean Streets. This memoir was a rebirth. A text of painful social truths down these mean streets became an instant classic when it was published in 1966. The short story Amigo Brothers by Puri Thomas is about two boys who have grown up together and are such great friends that they feel like brothers. It was published in 1978 as part of Stories from El Barrio, Thomas short story collection for young adults. Set in New York City, but heavily influenced by Puerto Rican culture, the story describes the two boys' love of boxing. For both, boxing has been a way to escape the negative influences that frequently beset young men in the inner city. When the two boys, Antonio and Felix, learn that they are to compete with against each other in the biggest fights of their lives, they are conflicted. They are such good friends that they don't want to hurt each other. They decide to fight each other without pulling any punches and it doesn't destroy their friendship. The story begins thus. Antonio Cruz and Felix Vergas were both 17 years old. They were so together in friendship that they felt themselves to be brothers. They had known each other since childhood, growing up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan in the same building. Antonio was fair, lean and lanky, while Felix was dark, short and husky. Antonio's hair was always falling over his eyes, while Felix wore his black hair in a natural Afro style. Each youngster had a dream of someday becoming a lightweight champion of the world. Each youngster had a dream of someday becoming a lightweight champion of the world. Every chance they had, the boys worked out sometimes at the boys' club and sometimes at the gym. Early morning sunrises would find them running along the East River Drive, wrapped in sweatshirts and short towels around their necks. While some youngsters were into street negatives, Antonio and Felix slept, ate, wrapped and dreamt positive. Between them, they had a collection of fight magazines plus a scrapbook filled with torn tickets to every boxing match they had 
ever attended and some clippings of their own. Now, after a series of elimination bouts, they had been informed that they were to meet each other in the division finals that were scheduled for the 7th of August, two weeks away, the winner to represent the boys club in the Golden Gloves Championship Tournament. Golden Gloves Amateur Boxing Competition initiated by Arch Ward, sports editor of the Chicago Tribune. First sponsored by the Tribune in 1926, annual tournaments were held between Chicago and New York teams from 1927. The New York organizer was Paul Gallico of the New York Daily News. This tournament marks an amateur's entry into professional boxing. Boxers like George Foreman and Muhammad Ali started their career with this tournament. The tournament's name stems from the small gold charm in the shape of a boxing glow that is awarded to a winner. Many Golden Gloves championships went on to become professional world champions. The two boys continued to run together along the East River Drive. But even when joking with each other, they both sensed a wall rising between them. One morning, less than a week before their bout, they met as usual for their daily workout. Antonio glanced at Felix, who kept his eyes purposefully straight ahead, posing from time to time to do some fancy leg work while throwing one-twos followed by uppercuts to an imaginary Joe. After a mile or so, Felix puffed and said, Let's stop a while, bro. I think we both got something to say to each other. Man, I don't know how to come out with it. Antonio helped. It's about a fight, right? Yeah, right. Felix's eyes squinted at the rising orange sun. I've been thinking about it too. In fact, since we found out it was going to be me and you, have been awake at night pulling punches on you, trying not to hurt you. Same here. It isn't natural not to think about the fight. I mean, we both are fighters and we both want to win. But only one of us can win. There are no draws in the eliminations. Felix tapped Antonio gently on the shoulder. I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging, bro, but I want to win, fair and square. Antonio nodded quietly. Yeah, we both know that in the ring, the better man wins. It's fair, Tony. When we get into the ring, it's got to be like we never met. We got to be like two heavy strangers that want the same thing and only one can have it. You understand? I know. Tony smiled. No pulling punches. We go all the way. Yeah, that's right. Listen, Tony, don't you think it's a good idea if we don't see each other until the day of the fight? I'm going to stay with my Aunt Lucy in the Bronx. Tony scratched his nose pensively. Yeah, it would be better for our heads. He held out his ha hand, palm upward. Deal? Deal. Felix lightly slapped open skin. Ready for some more running? Tony asked lamely. No, bro. Let's cut it here. You go on. I like to get things together in my head. You aren't worried, are you? Tony asked. No way, man. Felix laughed out aloud. I just think it's cooler if we split right here. After the fight, we can get together again like nothing ever happened. The Amigo brothers were not ashamed to hug each other. The evening before the big fight, Tony made his way to the roof of his building. In the quiet early dark, he peered over the ledge. He tried not to think of Felix, feeling he had succeeded in psyching his mind. But only in the ring would he really know. To spare Felix hurt, he would have to knock him out early and quick. Up in the South Bronx, Felix decided to take in a movie in an effort to keep Antonio's face away from his fists. The flick was the champion with Kirk Douglas. The champion was getting beaten. Felix felt a shock. He saw himself in the ring, blasting Antonio against the ropes. 
He walked up some dark streets, deserted, ex except for some small pockets of very looking kids wearing gang colors. Walking the streets had not relaxed him, neither had the fly fight flick. All it had done was to stir him up. He let himself quietly into his Aunt Lucy's apartment and went straight to it. Champion was an American film released in 1949 that was uh, one of the first movies to expose the brutality and corruption in the sport of boxing. It garnered six Academy Award nominations and is often cited as one of the best boxing movies ever made. It recounts the struggles of boxer Mitch, Mitch Kelly fighting his own demons while working to achieve success in the boxing ring. The drama was directed by Mark Robbins, Robson. The film won an Academy Award for Best Film Editing and gained five other nominations as well, including a Best Actor for Kirk Douglas. Antonio was passing some heavy time on his rooftop. How would the fight tomorrow affect his relationship with Felix? After all, fighting was like any other profession. Friendship had nothing to do with it. But a gnawing doubt crept in. He cut negative thinking re really quick by doing some speedy fancy dance steps. Felix, his amigo brother, was not going to be Felix at all in the ring. Just an opponent with another face. Antonio went to sleep. Like his friend, he prayed for a victory via a quick clean knockout in the first round. Large posters plastered all over the walls of local shops announced a fight between Antonio Cruz and Felix Vergas as a main bout. The fight had created great interest in the neighborhood. Antonio and Felix were well liked and respected. Each had his own loyal following. The fight was scheduled to take place in the Tompkins Square Park. The morning of the fight, Tompkins Square was a beehive of activity with numerous workers setting up the ring, the seats and the guest speaker stand. The scheduled bouts began shortly after noon and the park had been filling up even earlier. The waiting time was over. Felix was escorted from the classroom by a dozen fans in white t-shirts. Antonio was escorted down a different stairwell and guided through a roped off path. As the two climbed into the ring, the crowd exploded with a row. Antonio and Felix both bowed gracefully and then raised their arms in acknowledgement. Antonio tried to be cool. He turned slowly to meet Felix's eyes looking directly into his. Felix nodded his head and Antonio responded. Bong, bong, bong. The road turned to stillness. Ladies and gentlemen, the announcer spoke slowly. Nervous the moment we all have been waiting for. The main event between two fine young Puerto Rican fighters. In this corner, weighing 134 pounds, Felix Vergas, and in this corner, weighing 133 pounds, Antonio Cruz. The winner will represent the boys club in the tournament of champions, the Golden Gloves. There will be no draw. May the best man win. The cheering of the crowd shook the window panes of the old building surrounding Tompkins Square Park. At the center of the ring, the referee was giving instructions to the youngsters. Keep your punches up. No low blows. No punching on the back of the head. Keep your heads up. Understand? Let's have a clean fight. Now shake hands and come out fighting. Both youngsters touched gloves and nodded. They turned and danced quickly to their corners. Bong bong. Round one. Felix and Antonio turned and faced each other squarely in the fighting pose. Felix wasted no time. He came in fast, head low, half hunched towards his right shoulder and lashed out with a straight left. He missed a right cross as Antonio slipped the punch and countered with three lefts that snapped Felix's head back, sending a mild shock coursing through him. If Felix had any small doubt about their friendship affecting their fight, it was being neatly dispelled. Antonio's left hand was like a piston, pumping jabs one right after another with seeming ease. 
Felix bobbed and weaved and never stopped boring in. He knew that at long range, he was at a disadvantage. Antonio had too much reach on him. Only by coming in close could Felix hope to achieve the dreamed of knockout. Antonio knew the dynamite that was stored in his amigo brother's fist. He ducked a shot right and missed a left hook. Felix trapped him against the ropes just long enough to pose some of punishing rights and lefts to Antonio's head midsection. Antonio slipped away from Felix, crashing two lefts to his head, which set Felix's right ear ringing. Felix walked briskly back to his corner. Antonio gracefully danced his way towards a stool. Bong bong, round two. Felix was off his stool and rushed to Antonio like a bull, sending a hard right to his head. Antonio, hurt, sent back a blurring barrage of lefts and rights that only meant pain to Felix. Felix bobbed and weaved, bobbed and weaved, occasionally punching his two gloves together. Antonio waited for the rush that was sure to come. Felix closed in and fainted with his left shoulder and threw a right instead. Right to the body, left to the head. Neither fighter was giving an inch. Suddenly, a short right caught Antonio squarely on the chin. His long legs turned to jelly and his arms flailed out desperately. Felix, grunting like a bull, threw wild punches from every direction. Antonio, groggy, bobbed and weaved, evading most of the blows. Suddenly, his head cleared. His left flashed out hard and straight, catching Felix on the bridge of his nose. In a fog, Felix heard the roaring of the crowd, who seemed to have gone insane. His head cleared to hear the bell sound at the end of the round. His trainer sat him down on the stool. In his corner, Antonio was doing what all fighters do when they are hurt. They sit and smile at everyone. The referee signaled the ring doctor to check the fighters out. He did so and then gave his okay. The cold water sponges brought clarity to both Amigo brothers. They were rubbed until their circulation ran free. Bong! Round 3. The final round. Up to now, it had been tic-tac-toe. Pretty much even. But everyone knew there could be no draw and that this round would decide the winner. This time, to Felix's surprise, it was Antonio who came out fast, charging across the ring. Felix braced himself but couldn't ward, ward off the barrage of punches. Felix tapped his gloves and commenced his attack anew. Antonio, throwing boxers caution to the winds, jumped in to meet him. Both pounded away. Neither gave an inch, neither fell to the canvas. They fought toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The sounds of their blows were loud in contrast to the silence of a crowd gone completely mute. The referee was stunned by their savagery. Bong, bong, bong. The bell sounded over and over again. Felix and Antonio were past hearing. Their blows continued to pound on each other like hailstones. Finally, the referee and the two trainers pried Felix and Antonio apart. Cold water was poured over them to bring them back to their senses. They looked around and then rushed towards each other. A cry of alarm surged through Tompkins Square Park. Was this a fight to death instead of boxing match? The fear soon gave way to wave upon wave of cheering as the two amigos embraced. No matter what the decision, they knew they would always be champions to each other. Bong, bong, bong! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and representative to the Golden Globes Tournament of Champions is... The announcer turned to point to the winner and found himself alone. Arm in arm, the champions had already left the ring. Comparing Antonio and Felix Antonio Cruz and Felix Vergas were 17-year-old boys of Puerto Rican descent who lived in the lower eastern side of Manhattan. 
They grew up together in the same building and were thick friends from childhood and considered themselves as brothers. Both were passionate about boxing and cherished the dream of becoming lightweight boxing champions someday. Antonio was fair, lean and lanky, whereas Felix was dark, short and muscular. Antonio's hair was always falling into his eyes while Felix wore his black hair in the typical Afro style. Both had single-minded dedication towards their goal and toiled hard in the gym and boxing club in pursuit of their dream. A conflict arose when both were told that they had to compete with each other to represent their boys club in the prestigious Golden Globes tournament. Both wanted to win the match and hence they were worried whether it would affect their friendship. They realized that the tension was mounting between them, hence they took a mature decision unanimously not to meet each other till the match. They told each other that they would be meeting each other in the boxing ring as total strangers and promised to get back together after the match. Though both of them were good boxers, there were differences in their boxing style. Antonio had a precise boxing style where Felix was a slugger. Antonio was stronger at a long range. He moved gracefully using his long reach to his advantage. Felix was a hard puncher, mostly to the body, and had an added edge at a closer range. Both gave a neck-to-neck -neck fight in the boxing ring and threw coercion to the winds. There were times when the crowd felt that they might kill each other in their fierceness. Once the match was over, even before the results were announced, they embraced each other and walked away hand in hand, not waiting for the results. The crowd to realize that it is their friendship that won after all. As far as the boys were concerned, they knew that they had given their best shot and it didn't matter who won the match. In their minds, both considered themselves as winners.